Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at the Scorn starter set for Hordes. Um, this is the resin plastic starter set, so not your metal one, um, but it's fantastic. Um, what you get in it is uh, the Master Tormentor Morgul. Uh, you get two Cyclops Savages and you get one Titan Gladiator. Um, so let's have a quick look at the, the models. As I said, this is the new resin plastic kit. So uh, this is Morgul and it, it really is really good. If you look at the detail on those hands, they are really fine and dead easy to plug together. If, like me, you're an old player and you've had uh, some of the uh, metal kits, I, I have two of the metal starter sets in the house, um, simply because it's really good. <laughs> the stuff you get in it is, is a fantastic way to start a scoring force. Um, but Morgul and some of the models in it were a nightmare to put together. Um, that's all gone now because now they're resin plastic and they're plugged together. So uh, that's Morgul. You see, you get his leg that just goes in there. Um, that's his sort of uh, the front of his robe, and he's got his two uh, bladed sort of Freddy Krueger gardening glove hands um, that stick together, and of course his, his base as well. Um, all of which plug into the little uh, plugs where all these uh, the new resin plastic kits go. Uh, you get two of these guys. These are the Cyclops Savages. Um, that's just the body there, as you can see there's a, a bit you need to cut off at the bottom. The, all of these need a bit of cleaning up, but, uh, but nothing too, um, too much that you know, you'd, be, you'd be hard pressed to do it. Just a sharp uh, modeling knife will be able to, to sort out most of this stuff and take off any, any mold lines and any, any injection marks. Uh, this guy comes with his, his big sword and his arms. This is a Cyclops Savage who is... Uh, Really, really good actually for Scorn. Um, one thing you can say about the Scorn starter box is all the stuff that's in it is all good um, if you want to start your, your Scorn force. Um, there's the head of the Cyclops Gladiator, or sorry, the Cyclops Savage, and the uh, loincloth, uh, one shoulder pad. This new uh, model has one shoulder pad instead of two, the other one being sort of modelled on to the arm, which is which is great because one of the, the problems with sticking together the, the metal version of this was that you had to balance uh, the two arms with the two the two hands to try and get a sword uh, basically held in three position while you're trying to hold it. Dead easy if you were pinning it of course, but not so easy if you're if you're trying to do it with without pinning. Now it's uh, it's all resin plastic, so it's all light and uh, sticks together no problem. Uh, as well as which there are little plugs and things uh, for it all to stick on. Uh, one of the previous problems that there used to be with the metal models are these um, back banners and how they attach. Now, the, the fitting is actually pretty similar to the metal fitting. Um, it just plugs in, I don't know if you can see that quite, but it plugs in there. It's not a great connection, um, but because this is much lighter, it's... Uh, it's probably going to be easier to stick. Um, what I would love to do is get a little magnet and put it in there and see if I could uh, I could magnetize magnetize that on. So stick a little magnet in his back and perhaps just a, a bit of metal in there rather than rather than a magnet just to hold it on. The the the, prob the thing being because that it isn't that strong really um, unless you're going to have something like uh, like the battle foam. Uh, you know, cut, uh, custom cut stuff or the pick and pluck foam, um, you're really in danger of getting that, that snapped. Um, you could, of course, replace the the bar, perhaps with a with a, a metal pin or something. Um, I would say possibly the best way to do it is maybe to drill a little hole in the end and get like a, a, metal, a bit of metal from a paper clip or something like that and one of those strong neodymium magnets just to stick on perhaps uh, to that part and that part and that would probably hold it, one of the tiny, tiny magnets. And that would hold it in place, so you can just clip it off and clip it on again. You'll see when we get to the Titan Gladiator as well, that he's got a, a back banner too that's, uh, that's a bit more robust and probably a bit, uh, a bit easier to magnetise. Um, but it probably needs magnetised as well because it's going to suffer from the same problem. But let's get on to the, what I think is the best model in this box. It's really, really good. This is the new Titan Gladiator. Um, this is his body. Uh, as you can see, lots of nice big holes for things to plug into. In this case, his head, um, which just slips together like that, and that's, a, that's great. Um, having built these before, um, 
I know that they were a nightmare, a nightmare when they were metal. Um, basically because that wasn't filled, that part in there, and this was hollow. Um, so you're plugging them together and they, they really didn't fit very well. And I, uh, mine's actually held together with a huge big ball of uh, milliput just sandwiched in the middle there that I then sandwiched the top on, uh, held it together. I basically left it until it uh, until the ball of milliput solidified. Then when I took it apart, the the ball inside was was molded to the the shape of the the top edge, and it was then much easier to stick together. But again, if you're in a rush to get that done for a tournament, <laughs> you're not going to want to wait the 24 hours um, just just for for that to set. No, you don't have to worry because this is a majestic piece of work. I really love it. Um, the the arms of course uh, just stick on the sides so we've got four arms for him um, two main arms that have his, his punching gauntlets on these two little arms that have tinier punching gauntlets but uh, here's the big uh, the main event the punching gauntlets that he has plus of course there are tusks um, let's get some of this out of the way some of these arms away. So we have his head and the tusks, which just fit in to the uh, to the sides in there. So a bit loose, perhaps a, wee bit, a little bit of green stuff or something in there to hold it. Might be the job, but um, at least uh, or just cleaned up maybe um, might uh, might hold it in. But it, again, much much easier than the metal stuff. Um, here are all the plates and his. Uh, I think that's his, his sort of belly plate at the, the front there. It's two plates. And once again, we have our banner. As you can see, this banner is a lot more robust and chunkier than the other one. However, it doesn't seem to have a attachment point on the back of this, or does it? No, it doesn't. So um, you're gonna have to put it somewhere, I think about there is where it's supposed to go. Or maybe down a bit. One of these plates is obviously going to have to hold this a bit, so you might have to do a little bit of filing um, just to get that to, to stick properly. I think that's yeah, that's that's maybe the the plate that it's supposed to go on. Again, quite frankly, um, I would stick a couple of bits of uh, bits of metal in there from a, a paper clip and and magnetize it. Stick a little magnet into one of those plates, one of the neodymium magnets, um, I just stick that on and that would do fine because then if it gets knocked off you don't care because you just plug it back on again. But again, that's guaranteed. If it's going to break anywhere, that's going to snap down there. I have metal ones of these that have all snapped. Um, I had to drill them out and uh, replace them with uh, brass rods and it was a nightmare. But th the fact is that the the Titan Gladiator is a fantastic model. It's a really nice model. The metal one's lovely as well. Once you actually get it get it built, um, if you know anything about them, they're like sort of huge elephant man beasts. They're great uh, because in the game they're great as well. Oh, just uh, one last little bit. There's a couple of little uh, tassels in that bag. They're a bit small, so I'm not going to take them out of the bag, or we'll we'll risk losing them before these go off the paint. So that's the the last part of the. Um, the Gladiator. Uh, of course, you get all the cards as well. So there's the the Gladiator himself, Titan Gladiator. Um, you get Master Tormentor Morgul with his spells, Whoa. spells on his on his feet, and of course you get two Cyclops Savage cards. Now, if any of you guys are interested in playing Scorn. This truly is, and I'm not being funny, a great way to start. I know that it's, it's, it's supposed to be the starter box, but it is. It gives you two of undoubtedly the best war beasts that Scorn get. Um, the Cyclops Savage has a fantastic animus, and the, the uh, Titan Gladiator is just a huge powerhouse that punches like nothing else. It's, it's, it's great. Let's have a quick look at the cards, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Um, the Cyclops Savage, he has speed 6, strength 8, Mat six, uh, rat three, defense thirteen, arms armor seventeen, and command of six. He's got a falchion that has a power strength thirteen, and he costs only five points. He has three fury, um, so you know he's a lesser war beast, so he's not uh, 
he's oh, sorry, light war based speed, so he's not as focus heavy or, or can't generate as much focus, but three is plenty, especially when you see what he can do. Um, his animus is called Prescience. Prescience costs one, um, it has a range of six, and it, it can't be upkept, and it's not offensive. But what it does is uh, the target friendly faction model gains future sight, and Prescience lasts for one turn. Future sight, uh, this model can boost attack and damage rolls after rolling which is brilliant. That means you get to roll your 2d6 first, and then you decide whether you want to boost your attack or your damage roll. So if you roll 2d6 for your attack, and you don't get enough, you go, oh, well, I'll boost that. And that's when you, you start uh, spending your, fu your fury points. It's, it's brilliant. It's, it's one of the, the best abilities that Scorn get. Um, and once you start handing it about to the different, uh, different beasts, when you cast that Animus as a spell, it becomes really good. And really, um, it's such an advantage, especially to new players who may not be uh, too sure about when to boost, why to boost, um, you know, should you be boosting against different different, uh, different beasts and stuff like that. This takes all the work out of it uh, for the cost of one. Uh, again, the Titan Gladiator, the Titan Gladiator with Future Sight on it uh, becomes so focus efficient, it's ridiculous. Um, let's have a look at him actually. Um, he's got a Fury of 4. Um, he has Speed 4, Strength 12, Mat 6, Rat 3, Defense 12 and armor of 19 with a command 7. Um, his tusks do power strength 15. His war gauntlets that he has do power strength 16. Um, and they're, they count as open hands. Um, he's also got a load of damage, damage uh, circles or boxes if you want. Um, if I remember rightly, he's got 30. Um, one, two, oh, I'll count up. He's got, he's got a load anyway, maybe even more than that. Um, his animus is rush. It costs two. Has a range of six. Can't be upkept. It's not offensive. Target friendly war beast gains plus two inches of movement and pathfinder, and rush lasts for one turn. Again, for two points. Now you've got your heavy war beast. Despite having uh, two speed of two, means that you can now you know boost that by two inches. Effectively, you know, making it uh, well means you can charge what, an extra plus five. So you, you can charge nine inches. Um, He's bullheaded, so uh, when this model frenzies, if it would normally charge uh, a model, it instead makes a, a slam power attack, which means just basically charges them with his uh, with his tusks, which are fantastic. Uh, you can follow up when uh, this model slams an enemy model. Uh, after a slam, it can move, uh, it can advance directly towards the slammed model. Um, so basically, you just knock them back, and then you you, you move after them, and grand slam. Uh, this model can make slam power attacks without spending focus or being forced. Um, and it slams any model moved an additional two inches. It's basically a big shoving machine um, that can just slam everything about, obviously charging with its tusks. Um, the tusks on his head as well, whenever you make a slam power attack, instead of using uh, the strength of the model, you can actually use the, the power of his tusks, which is 15. That, of course, just makes it incredibly useful for slamming and, and, and chucking people about, just forcing them back. I mean, if you imagine trying to hide behind uh, an enemy war beast or even a war, uh, a war jack or something like that, and he just charges in and knocks you the, the extra two inches over the top over the top, and just mows them all down. It's brilliant. Um, he's also got a, a threshold of nine, the, um, the, the Titan Gladiator, so he's, he's reasonably easy to keep in control, um, as well as which... The, f the fact is that his, his power and strength 16 might seem low, but he's got four, um, four fury. And if you've got uh, prescience on him as well, so he has future sight, you know, you're deciding whether you want, to, you want to up that damage or whether you, d you don't. So it makes him really, really good. I love Titan Gladiators. Um, all the better, of course, because they cost eight points. So they're particularly good and, and quite, quite cheap and quite, uh, quite affordable whenever you're putting them into your, a smaller point band. So then finally we have Master Tormentor Morgul. Uh, he's speed 7, strength 6, mat 8, rat 4, defense 17, uh, armor 13, he has a command of 8. He's also a pathfinder. He has rippers, which are his little gauntlets, which are magical weapons and have a power strength, uh, power strength 9. He has 5 fury. Um, he's, he's not the toughest guy in the world, but then, then again he's, uh, he's supposed to be sort of fast and nimble as opposed to incredibly tough. And highly armored, he's uh, he's got seven war beast points as well. So, you know, you're nearly getting a free gladiator with him um, if you take him. He has anatomical precision, uh, which means if you roll your damage and he doesn't score any damage, he does one box of auto damage. 
Um, he has maltreatment. So uh, once per turn during his activation, this model can remove one fury point from a war beast in his battle group uh, that is in his control area and add one fury point onto his own total. The war beast then suffers D3 uh, damage points. Yeah, basically just gives him an extra uh, bonus point um, should you need it uh, by inflicting a few points of damage onto, your, onto one of your war beasts. Uh, overtake, when this model uh, destroys one or more er enemy models uh, within his normal, with his normal melee attack, after the attack is resolved, he can immediately advance one inch, which basically means if you're fighting against a, a unit or something like that, you can start moving through the unit uh, and killing all the uh, all the guys that are in it. Uh, perfect balance, which means that he's immune to combined range attacks and combined uh, melee attacks. Uh, he can't be targeted by free strikes. Uh, he can't be targeted by so back strikes. Don't get a bonus against him. Um, let's see, when he's knocked down, he he don't get any bonus for from being knocked down either. Um, again, he's supposed to be some sort of kung fu monk type. Uh, that's the way the the agonizer guys, uh, sort of the pain givers, uh, operate. So you can imagine that he's got those sort of those sort of abilities. Uh, sprint uh, at the end of this model's activation, if it destroyed more uh, one or more enemy models, uh, it can make a full advance, which of course just makes him faster again. It's one of the problems actually with this with, with this entire warband is that everything's reasonably slow except for Morgul himself, who's incredibly fast. Um, but that all lends, lends itself to the tactics of just making him run in and uh, assassinate someone, just hit them as, as, as many times as you can, trying to get up a, a load of auto damage, preferably against somebody you've already damaged, of course. Uh, his Ripper has double strike, so he can make two additional attacks for each Fury point that he spends uh, to make additional attacks with this weapon. So basically, if you keep spending Fury points to make extra attacks, you get two for, for every one point you spend. Uh, not bad when he's got five fury, which means of course he's getting ten extra attacks. Like I say, you, you can sit and do that's ten auto damage if you fail, if you hit with all those attacks and you fail to get the armor rolls, he's going to do at least ten damage. And he can inflict pain uh, when he hits a war beast with this weapon. Uh, the model can place one fury or remove one fury point from the war beast, which gives you a bit of fury manipulation on uh, on enemy war beasts as well. Should they manage to get through and attack him, his. Uh, his feet then is particularly good. It's pain and suffering. Um, basically, it's a great lockdown. It locks down enemy war beasts. Um, and while in Morgul's control area, enemy models cannot spend focus, be forced, or have damage transferred to them. Pain and suffering lasts for one round. Um, when you are going in for your assassination run, that's when you, you use that feat. And the guy you attack basically can't transfer away any damage if you're attacking a warlock. Um, also, they, they can't spend focus to upkeep spells or cast spells. Which is all good, but um, it's perhaps slightly better against uh, against hordes players than it is against uh, against war machine. Okay, the three spells he has are abuse, uh, admonition, and torment. <laughs> all 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 good wholesome stuff then. Um, abuse cause two uh, has range six, has no upkeep. Uh, target friendly model gains plus two speed and strength for one for one round, but suffers d three damage points. Um, always good for that turn where you want to have extra speed and get the charge in, uh, especially in one of the small starter games. Whenever the, the best thing to do, of course, is to try and kill the, the Warcaster every time. Uh, admonition. Uh, when the enemy model advances and ends its movement within six inches of a target model with this uh, in this model's battle group, the effective model can immediately advance up to three inches, uh, then admonition expires. The effective model cannot be targeted by free strikes during this movement. Uh, cost two has a range of six uh, and can be upkeep uh, can be upkept. Yeah, it's all, all good. I mean, um, it's again giving you that extra bit of movement to sort of keep up. Uh, you, the last thing you want is for Morgul to be running the head of all his, his war beasts, um, where he can get singled out and killed. So this is the the way they sort of as as your enemy comes in, your guys can start moving up to engage them because obviously you've you've no uh, ranged attacks here at all. Um, the fancy, uh, last one is Torment, uh, cost 2, has a range of 10 and power 12, uh, it's an offensive spell, when the model is damaged by Torment, uh, for one round it loses tough and cannot heal or be healed and cannot transfer damage, so again that's his, his little ranged uh, blast spell that uh, most Warlocks and, and war, ca uh, war Casters come with, it's a good way of dealing with um, things like ghosts and all that sort of stuff. Um, of course, it has the the additional advantage of uh, stopping things being healed, but it's two points, 
two points, which is basically four of your melee attacks. I don't know. I would. I uh, wouldn't be using it very often. Um, if, if anything's within range of 10 of, of Morgul, I'd be trying to charge him in the combat to get a, to get all those uh, those wee snippy attacks off with his uh, with his gauntlets. So there you go, guys. The, sc the Scorn starter set. Um, a great box if you want to start uh, hordes and you fancy starting Scorn. Um, the Cyclopses are great. The uh, Titan Gladiator is a stalwart for any uh, build of, of Scorn army that you're going to have. Um, I have two maybe three of them i can't even remember how many i have but i've definitely got two of them um just because they're basically across the board they do they do great stuff they're solid and they they can hit like a like a truck whenever you get them uh boosted up so guys what do you think um are you interested in playing scorn if you are drop some comments below tell us about it hey let's see if we can get some discussion going um if you have some pictures of your own scorn force why don't you send them in and we'll see if we can get them up on the website okay so until next time we'll have a look at some more score more more hordes <laughs> not scorn uh, more hordes next time. I'll see you later.